Guys, apparently I've been saying it wrong the whole time. It's not ADA Contemporary Gallery. It's something else. But let me not take the spotlight away from the enlightened lady. So she's going to tell us all about the pronunciation of the name, what it's all about, and any other thing we need to know. So yeah, let's go. and I'm the Gallery Associate of Ada Contemporary Art Gallery. The name Ada is coined from our founder and director's name. She's called Adora. Ada means first daughter in Yoruba, in Nigeria. Our director and founder is half Ghanaian and half Yoruba, so Nigeria. So that's her name. So she used her name to build to open the gallery. So the name of the gallery is Ada Contemporary Art Gallery. So what's the meaning of the name Ada itself? So yeah, so Ada means first daughter. So I think we have a similar uh, naming culture in Ghana where yes, we, we do. name first, we have a name for first born, second born. So in Yoruba, Ada means first daughter. Oh, yes. So what's the whole vision behind the Ada Contemporary Art Gallery? Yes. So Ada Contemporary Art Gallery is poised to become or to be or is becoming an international art source or space where African arts and African artists are pushed into the global art market. So what we do is we are into nurturing up and coming young artists to help build their career and to help push them into the global art market. Yes. So we also uh, take up the role of advisors. We also advise young artists. We help nurture and groom their practice. And yeah, and then we also help sell their works. So we represent artists from all around the world, but mostly African artists specifically. So African artists in the diaspora, and then African artists on the African continent as well. So we've, we've had about nine exhibitions, and we've worked with South African artists, Nigerian artists, and Ghanaian artists, yes. So we continue to work with other artists as well. So, yeah, so since you worked with so many artists and so many exhibitions, would you say so far you had a favorite art exhibition or collection? If um, yes, which one? Every art exhibition is different, and every art exhibition and artist work is different. So it, it all depends. I can't, I can't say personally I have a favorite yet, but I think they are all great and amazing. Okay. So it depends. Alright, so this is my second time being here. As I was saying, I came for the um, one you had before this one called the... Um, I Am? Was it I no, Am? No, Hidden Realms and Shadows. Hidden Realms and Shadows. By Fabiza Nkuma. Exactly, yes, yes. with the um, basket and all that. Yes. Exactly. And I really, really love that um, collection. However, I see today's theme and the whole gallery has been changed altogether for a new exhibition and for a new artist, which is very refreshing to see that you put in so much work to um, build a whole exhibition for each artist. Yeah. I see men, dark-skinned men wearing cotton candy pink um, or a very light shade of pink, which yeah. most men wouldn't baby wear. Pink. Baby <laughs> pink, yes. Which most men wouldn't dare to wear on yeah. the regular because of certain stereotypes here, especially in the Part of the world we find ourselves in so it's quite intriguing and interesting and there was a question playing in my mind as to why the choice of colors why the choice of skin tone and also why this whole collection so i'm sure that my subscribers are also wondering why there's so much pink and yeah can you tell us about this yes so um the pink uh samola yombo is an artist who works on um, toxic masculinity. So 
in this particular exhibition, his focus is on uh, gender associations. So what society um, associates with color when it comes to gender. So, but in history, and when you go back to history, in history, especially in the Western society, Western culture, pink was first associated to boys and blue was associated to girls. Pink in the sense that Kim pink is a warm color and it's a vivid color. And it was assumed that boys are very aggressive, very loud, very masculine, very active. That was what they were doing. And then the blue was given to little girls because blue is a more soothing color, it's a calm color. So yeah, we are the docile gender, the weak gender, the soft gender, the quiet gender. So that's what was going on for a while. Then in the course of uh, the, the Industrial Revolution and a lot of societal changes happened and companies decided to switch. So it's a, an economic thing for economic gain. They decided to switch the, the colors. So they were giving pink to girls and then blue to boys. So an example is the Barbie franchise. When you look at the Barbie, Barbie is an, an, a very huge industry which create Barbie dolls. And all the Barbie dolls are dressed in pink, which then is what? Given to girls to play with. So like it was economic factors that made them flip the whole thing. Now it's girls wearing pink and what? Boys wearing blue. And in this society, this time, this modern age, it, like this thing has been entrenched, this societal uh, culture has been entrenched so deeply in, in, in our society that now if a gentleman decides to wear pink, he will be stigmatized. One, he will be said maybe he's homosexual or LGBTQ or if he were, which in a sense is not even something that is even necessary, but it's something that comes up because pink is, is seen as a feminine color. But it's not supposed to be so. I mean, someone's point is that every color, we shouldn't associate color with gender at all. We can all be free to wear any color that we want, whether we are straight or we are gay or whatever we identify as, we should be allowed to wear any color that we want. So that's that is the the crust, the point of uh, some world's um, exhibition that we shouldn't associate color with any color. We can all wear any color we want, and that masculinity is dynamic. Masculinity is not stiff, macho. That's not the only thing. That's the only thing you can describe as being masculine. Masculinity can also be vulnerable, soft, sweet, hmm? candy. <laughs> it can be fun. It can be fluid. I mean, masculinity is many things. It's not just one thing. So that's the point, some of the points someone was trying to put across in its work. Okay. Um, what's the name of this exhibition collection? So this collection, we are calling it Unchained, the Cotton Candy Cowboys. Hmm. And when you look at the, the cowboys, someone is referencing Hollywood. Hollywood, many decades, have projected the cowboy to be white and macho. But there were, there were black and macho cowboys as well. Out of four cowboys, there was always one black cowboy that was macho. But when Hollywood was preparing their narratives, they always conveniently left that one out. So someone is just reaffirming that, or affirming that we ex these cowboys existed. And joining the new narrative that is cropping up in Hollywood, when you look at some of the new Hollywood movies that have come, you have Cowboy, Idris Abba is, 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 is starring in one of them. I've forgotten the, the name of the movie. Yes, so Cowboy is also a symbol of uh, 
heroism and macho machoism which is part of masculinity so anyway he's also celebrating masculinity as it is the way it is he's not asking us to be he's not asking men to be feminine but he's asking men to accept the dynamic nature of their masculinity that they are not one thing they are not stiff boards they are also flexible and, and, and wonderful and sweet and that's not wrong to be to be those things mm -hmm. so when you look, look closely you are talking about the skin yeah when you look closely at the skin you can see that the, the skin is textured yeah so you see he borrowed that from the he referenced that from the uh, yoruba again the effect the scarification of the effect how they scar their 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 skin like the tribal marks yeah tribal marks for identification okay but what he did was he he enhanced it further by uh, covering it all over the, the skin of the figures yeah one observation i made taking a an in-depth look at the art pieces was that almost all the characters in the frame seem to have a rather um, stunning resemblance with real life characters mm -hmm. but it's quite intriguing because you can't seem to pinpoint exactly who you know it looks like take for instance one of them i dare say it is kind of um, one of the young you know minds contributing to art in ghana right now called the kinta kinti i saw him in the art maybe someone else might see something so would you affirm or deny that these characters in the painting may or may not be real life characters okay the only real life character i know that he has painted is um the american uh, hip-hop or american rapper um, little, little nas x okay who but, just happened to be lgbtq but the rest i know are friends of his or real life people but they are not celebrities. But to in order to get the exact, uh, to uh, in order to know if all of them are people he knows, or he borrowed uh, some references from celebrities, unless I, I, I find out from him. <laughs> <laughs> I am an art fanatic. I love art. Um, I've always done art since I was a little girl and i do enjoy seeing pieces like this and it makes me so happy that there are platforms now available mm -hmm. to young creators yeah. that puts them on the international market so that they can showcase their art to everybody in the world mm -hmm. so um i will i would also like to contribute to that in my own way by putting this app so that um you can reach out to people all over the world mm -hmm. to also um, be a part of this experience so that brings me to ask if anyone at all anywhere in the world wants to get one of these gorgeous art pieces what is the process that they can pass through to get one because i want one <laughs> <laughs> yes so you will send us an email you send our team an email uh, what's the email uh, info at adakra.com Okay, guys, I'll put that in the description box. .com. Yes, then you just tell us. Um, the best thing you can do is to give a little bit about yourself. Be specific. It's good if you have a sneak signature um, under your, 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 your email when you are sending. You have a signature which cont it contains your address, uh, your, your contact if possible. Because we don't want to give artist works out to people we don't know. We need to know that you are credible. You are actually a credible art collector who will take care of the art works of the artist because at the end of the day, yes, we want our money, but our focus is also on, or our intention is also on protecting the artist's legacy. Yes. So we, we are very, it's very important to us that we know who you are and your intention for the, for the work as well. So yeah. Make sure that is very clear. So you can take an, the image, an image of the work, screenshot it or however you would. You send email to us 
and then we take it from there yes so guys this has been miss kezia omoye osu ankuma you're both like ghanaian and nigerian no omoye is actually a fancy name Oma oh. oye, but if I'm mentioning it, just mention it. Omo oh, oye. Okay, mm. it sounds so exotic. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God! So guys, this has been Miss Kezia telling yes. us all about the Ada Contemporary Art Gallery and what it stands for. What this Unchained Cotton Candy Cowboys that sounds so Spanish and exotic exhibition stands for. What it um, aims to achieve and how you can get your hands on one of these gorgeous species so if you want one i'll link their email and their contact information in the description box so you guys can get one if there's an artist out there that's watching this video who wants to um, have his pieces exhibited here at the adult contemporary art gallery what are the procedures they can go through to you know get in contact with the gallery or what are the general procedures that the person can go through to have the pieces exhibited okay. here? Yes, sure. So what you do is you prepare a portfolio of your works with dimension, measurement, everything. So be in a PDF format. And then also write your artist statement mm -hmm. in a PDF format. And then you send it, email it to us via info at adakura.com. That's all. Yeah, so we will go through and then we will call you when we, we are interested in your work. Okay, is there any payments necessary before or that? You can also DM me on Instagram, send me an attachment of your, of your, or send me or share me your Instagram profile so I can see your work and then I can also guide you on further on what to do. What's the Instagram handle? Uh, my Instagram handle is Kezia underscore Omoye. Kezia underscore Omoye. So you can DM me there as well. Okay. So is there any payments necessary no, before that? No payments. We don't accept any payment. Okay. Thank you. And of course, if you like this video, make sure to like and subscribe and share to your friends and family so we can curate more experiences like this for you and if you want to come to the um ada contemporary okay, art gallery let me know send me an email and let's make this experience possible for you until next time bye for now bye guys so i made a few observations and i'd like to share that with you guys i feel like to greatly um, appreciate these pieces of art there are some things that really lend credence to the originality and the authenticity of the art and um, some of the things that i realized is the texture um, on their skin and on their faces they are not smooth um, and all of that and of course miss kezia clarified that in the interview which you guys should totally watch what i also realized was the difference in clothing so you realize that over here the gentleman right here is wearing a v-neck t-shirt which seems to stand for something in my opinion i think it stands for um contemporary you know times art um freedom where you can just slip into something simple and go and feel free i mean all of this is just my opinion i'm not saying this is what the artist is trying to say and i see over here this gentleman here who looks like little nas s is in one of the mexican ranch you know cowboy attires um with a white shirt inside i don't know what that stands for so i'm not gonna attempt now the gentleman over here in my opinion is wearing kind of a white shirt inside with a suit on it with some kind of um, scarf at the neck which i know cowboys do as well and he looks really really good with it now the gentleman over here also seems to look like the master of the ranch you know with this all three piece suit situation all poised and posed for the photo and then the gentleman over here in my opinion 
looks like the bad cowboy, you know, that is all the ladies are astray in the ranch. This, uh, with the, this gentleman right here with a long trench coat, I don't seem to really understand what his clothing means, so I'm not going to ask him to talk about that. Now this, however, looks like the Don Papa of the ranch, you know, with a little uh, big button belt and just chilling right there, just looking at the horses from a distance. And this also seems to be like the young star of the ranch, you know, sports mommy's boy gets away with everything kind of situation. And then this is the master of all the beard gang um, ranch boys, in my opinion. So, <laughs> guys, it's so funny. I'm just talking so much. And then this right here seems to be the first one, the disciplinarian, and like, that I sit down there before I whoop you <laughs> kind of situation. So, yeah, that's just me ranting. That, those were some of my, um, you know, observations. I also realized that um, none of the art pieces seem to be wearing any kind of jewelry and um even though pink was used in this exhibition primarily um a pink shade they are all not the same each background is different and a different shade of pink so if two people bought the same piece of art i don't think it will be the same so at the end of the day each person ends up having a unique piece of art so guys, yes, this has been it. My experience at the Ada Contemporary Art Gallery. It's not called ADA because it's not an abbreviation. You should totally watch my interview with Miss Kezia to learn more about the Ada Contemporary Gallery and all this, um, what it's all about. So yeah, this has been your girl bringing you beautiful experiences all around Ghana, all around Accra. And we are currently at the Ada Contemporary Art Gallery. The Maxi Kali, so of course, I want to take you guys away with me. So, yeah, if you like this video, make sure to like and subscribe, share to your friends and family, and of course, like this, leave a comment. Let me know which piece of art was your favorite and which one you like to buy. Until next time, bye.